Hello friends, this is Rupesh and you are watching CPP Learns video series on C++ and today's topic is Assignment Operator Overloading in C++ and in this video we will be covering like why you should overload this assignment operator even though it is already given by the compiler and how you should overload that operator. So let's start with the point now. So the zeroth point is when you should write your own assignment operator in C++. So the answer for that is when you have pointers in your class. What I mean to say is when you are having data members as pointer in your class, that time you will go for assignment operator overloading. Okay? If there is no pointer data member in your class, there is no need of overloading this operator. And assignment operator means this. Now the second point is this comes under binary operator overloading. Binary means you will be having two operands here equal to here. So this is your right hand side and this is your left hand side. So you should have two operands in order to perform this overloading. So this was the second point. Now the third point is when we need deep copy. So this is another topic which is called shallow copy and deep copy difference. So if you don't know what is deep copy, go ahead and watch my video about deep copy and shallow copy in C++. So when you need deep copy, then only you will go for assignment operator overloading. And deep copy happens when you have pointers in your class. Otherwise we don't need deep copy. So the last point is we should always create our own copy constructor when we are overloading assignment operator and vice versa. So if you are going for assignment operator overloading, you should always write your copy constructor. Or if you are in need to write copy constructor, you should always overload the assignment operator. You should not rely on the compilers given assignment operator if you are explicitly giving this copy constructor. Because you will be giving copy constructor for only one reason. You have pointer data member in your class. So let's start the coding to understand this better. And these two points are when you will create the function, I mean overloading the assignment operator, that time you have to keep these two points in your mind that self assignment is a very dangerous thing. And we'll discuss that when we'll code it. And the second point is assignment operator must be overloaded by non-static member function only. Okay, so you cannot create a global function and make that function a friend of your class and it will work. No, it is not going to work. So let's quickly write the code. So let's create this test t1 and initialize it with some value. Let's say 10. Let's create another test 2 and don't initialize it with anything. So it will automatically be initialized with 0. Now this is what we want. t2 is equal to t1. And let's print t1 dot. No, wait a minute. Don't print. Just set another value for this t1's x. So we'll set 20 here. And now we can print t1 and t2. But before going for the compilation, let's give some message like output. So this is going to be the output for our program. Now let's compile this. Output is 20 and 20. Why 20 and 20? What we did here? We initialized t1 which was 10 into t2 and then we changed t1 into 20 but t2 is also changed see this is t2's output here t2 is also changed why is it like this are you getting my point we have this t1 initialized with 10 we created t2 later we initialize this t2 with t1 so t1 was holding 10 at that time and after initializing 10 into t2 we change this t1 and printing t1 and t2 both are printing 20. So this is the problem. So let's look at the problem here. The problem is you have this t1. So let's create the memory layout for t1. Inside this t1 full we have this x. Okay. And this is pointer x. Okay. There is another t2. And similarly we have pointer x for this. Okay, so this is your T1 and this is T2. Now what we did, we'll go by line by line. So here you created T1 and initialized with 10. So created means this 
constructor was called and you created the memory for this dynamically. So let's assume there is some heap here. Let's call it heap and four bytes were given to you. So there are total four bytes and what you did, you initialized 10 on that. So this is how it worked. And let's suppose the initial address of this was zero cross one and one. So this is zero cross one and one. So till this, we are clear. Now you created T2, but you didn't pass anything. So value will become zero because you're not passing anything. So this time value will be zero. And this time you are taking another four bytes. And let's suppose that address is zero cross one and two. No, 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 it should not be one and two. Let's suppose it is two and two. And you initialize that there. And the value is zero. So let's initialize zero here. So till this we are clear. Now you're initializing T1 into T2. So let's see what is happening. As this is compiler generated assignment operator, remember I told you if you are not giving any assignment operator overloading, compiler will give it by itself. So what compiler will think, compiler will do a shallow copy. Compiler will not go for deep copy. So shallow copy means whatever this X is holding, it will initialize to this X. Compiler doesn't know that it is holding address. So we have to create another address here and initialize the value of that, not the address. So shallow copy is like this. Whatever is there, you just assign here. So instead of this 2, 2, let's make it 1 and 1. We will have 1 and 1 here. It means the same address has come here. Now, before you was pointing to this location, now you are not pointing to this location. You are pointing to this location. And this one is also pointing to this location. So both objects X are pointing to this location only. Okay. After this assignment. Now what you did? After assigning, you changed T1. So if you are going to change T1 and going to make this 20. And after changing that, if you will print T1 and T2. Both will obviously print 20 because both are pointing at this location only. Okay, so this is the problem. So there are two problems in this code. First is you lost this memory. Okay, you don't have any access to this memory now because you have replaced that memory with another memory. Second problem is when we will go for destruct, in that case T1 will destruct first and then T2. Oh, wait a minute. If you will follow the stack, T2 will get destructed first, then T1 because T2 was created later. So this happens on the stack. If we believe, then it is like T1 was created first and then T2 was created. So if you are freeing this memory, then T2 will go out first, then T1 will go out. Okay. So T2's destructor will call and T2's destructor will end up freeing this memory 0 cross 1 1. So this memory is free now. Okay, assume that and after T2, T1 is also going to get destroyed and T1 will end up again freeing that memory. And this is a problem. You are going to free that memory two times. So in order to overcome all these problems, we go for operator overloading. And remember this, this problem comes when we have pointers in our class. I am telling you again and again so that you can remember this. So let's go ahead and implement our assignment operator. Now you know the problem, what problem assignment operator will solve. So this is the syntax for that. We will return objects reference and obviously we need one operator keyboard and equal to and here we will take right hand side member as const const test ref rhs. So let me write the syntax first then we will understand this. So this is equal to is equal to address of rhs. If no, no, no. If this is not equal to equal to RHS, then in that case, we will initialize X is equal to RHS dot X with dereferencing. Okay. Otherwise, we'll just return pointer this. So you are done. Now, if you will assign T2 with T1, this function will be called. So let's see how this will call here this particular line will be replaced with something like this you have this t2 dot operator is equal to and you will pass this t1 here 
okay so something like this will be replaced with t2 is equal to t1 okay so your compiler will do this not exactly this but something like this i'm just giving you the hint to understand this concept so this portion is your function calling portion and this is the object so you're calling this particular function on this object and passing t1 as a parameter so we'll come here we are taking this t1 as a constant reference why constant because you don't want to change this t1 accidentally inside this program i mean function so here we are taking it as a constant and we are taking it as a constant because we can so compiler will have some optimization for constant variables so it is little faster in some sense and then we are taking it as a reference why reference because we don't want to make the copy of it because that is unnecessary copy so that's why we are taking as a constant and the reference so this t1 has become rhs now and this is this important thing i told you we have to check the self assignment because it is dangerous why it is dangerous we can see that if there is t1 is equal to t1 let's suppose you ended up doing this it is perfectly fine you are initializing t1 into t1 but let's suppose if you are not writing this one i mean you are not checking this you will end up assigning all those things again and again which doesn't has any meaning let's suppose you are not having any integer pointer x let's suppose you are having a very big array of pointers or very big data and what you did you ended up assigning that data again to itself which doesn't make any sense so that's why we should always check the self assignment case and self assignment how would you check that this keyword this pointer will be having the address of t2 because we are calling on this t2 object okay so this pointer is holding the address of t2 now you are comparing with rhs address so you got this t1 as parameter let's suppose this is not t1 this is t2 then address of rhs will be equal to address of t2 so if both are not equal then only you will assign it and if they are equal it means they are same object okay and if they are not then we are simply just assigning one value to another value and this star x shows that this x is belonging to this t2 okay and we are dereferencing that rhs dot x which is this t1's x and assigning it into t2's x and this is one important point why we are returning this pointer dereferencing and the reason is there is this syntax t1 is equal to t2 is equal to t3 okay don't miss this part so what we are doing is first we will initialize t2 inside t1 and then we will initialize t3 into t1 so if you are writing something like this then this is two step process you are initializing t2 and then for the same thing is with t3 okay so this one line is this two step and if you're not sure you just take integer x and let's make y and z and if you are doing it like x is equal to y is equal to z and they all are integer values it is going to be like x is equal to y and then x is equal to z so this is the traditional behavior of this assignment operator that's why in order to achieve that same traditional behavior what is coming from c language we are returning it by reference so let's see what is happening here if not here uh, here so first this will execute we know that because this is round bracket and the preference sorry precedence is higher for this so t2 will be assigned into t1 that is okay this code is fine and we are returning don't forget this this pointer is pointing to t1 now okay so t1's reference it means after this full expression we will have t1 here okay because we are returning it by reference and by reference means t1 itself we are not making any copy and then t1 is initialized with t3 okay so this is how it will work so we have ended up achieving this behavior which is a traditional behavior which is maybe called chain assignment or something i am not sure about that but there is something i mean we call this 
behavior something i don't i'm not sure about that but in order to achieve this only we return it by reference so you have to remember few things you have to take the argument as constant reference and you have to check the self assignment and you have to return it by reference okay so these three four things you need to remember for this and wait a minute we are not done yet don't you think uh, you are doing a specific thing here you are assigning t1 with i mean t2 with t1 and both are of similar type both are object of test class what if there is another class let's call it base or something i'm not good with the naming things just i would like to clear your concept that is more than enough <laughs> so base let's suppose there is some object b and what you are doing is t1 is equal to b can you do this yes we can do this and let's look at that Oh, 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 oh,